Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative for Atlantic British, and in this video we're going to show you how to replace the rear brakes on your LR3 and or Sport. It's the same application on both vehicles, same procedure, almost basically the same parts. So it'll be uh, uh, the right procedure for both vehicles. So essentially uh, the big th issue is not so much the replacement of the pads, which is relatively easy, but removal of the rotor because of the parking brake assembly built inside. I get a lot of calls on that, so we're going to touch base on that, on how to back them off, how to readjust them on reassembly, just make it a lot easier in the long run so you can see how it's done. So, just like any other basic brake system in the back, we're going to compress the caliper piston in place. If you fully compress it now, it'll make it much easier for you on reassembly when you've got those new pads in place and the thicknesses are much wider. And all you're going to want to essentially do is sneak in through the top of the caliper. You're going to put the tip of the screwdriver up against this outer surface here on the rotor. You don't have to worry about scratching it because you're going to replace the rotor anyway. And then just simply pull towards yourself. Nice even pressure. Steady. You should feel that piston retract in there. If you find you're having a real hard time getting that piston back in, there's a good chance it is binding up and you may need to replace the caliper. Here you can see we've been able to compress the piston all the way back into the caliper and we've got nice smooth play. That's the other thing you want to check are the top and bottom sliders to make sure they're moving nice and easy. This allows for the action of the caliper to fully and evenly compress the pads onto the rotor. So, next we have two 13 millimeter bolts on each side holding the caliper to the mount. And you'll find in most cases that the, the slider will spin with it. Now, you can grab them with a pair of needle nose vice grips. I actually have a set of thin 15 millimeter wrench that will slide right in there. A thick wrench or a normal size wrench usually is a little bit too wide and you'll have a hard time getting a bite on that nut back there. So, we hold in place and we take out the two bolts. So, we've taken the two bolts out you compress the piston so it'll make it easy removal you might find some brake material up inside the caliper piston left over from the pads you tap that off just to clean it up a little bit now the next step is going to be for removal of the caliper mount there's two 15 millimeter 12 point bolts that hold that caliper in place the mount and you are going to need a 12 point socket or one of the uh, newer gear style sockets will also grab it but a six point will not be able to reach and grab around that nut. So you're going to need 12 point or a gear, gear socket. So we've taken our two bolts out. We're going to lift the caliper mount out of place. Pull those pads out of there. They're going to be stuck on there pretty good. You can see the buildup that you get on these when you, uh, when you put some miles on them. And we definitely got our money's worth out of these pads. You can see how thin they are. Normally your new pads are going to be almost four times as thick as the material you see on this one. And we'll toss that. And we'll get rid of this one. And we'll put this aside for cleaning. Alright, now, take the rotor off. There's a small plastic access plug in these rotors. One thing you want to look for on some of these, that there were issues in the past, if the brake pads inside, the park brake pads, or actually their shoes, should create a heating, uh, overheating situation. You'll notice a discoloration in the rotor, but in many cases you'll find this little plastic plug melted. If you see that, more than likely you're probably going to be replacing those brake shoes inside, and you'll see those in just a few minutes. But we're going to pull that little, pull that right out. It's got a little cap on it so you can either get a bite on it with a pair of diagonal pliers or a small knife, but that's essentially the cap. We're going to put that aside. And with a flashlight, we're going to spin this rotor until you can see. Alright, so what I've done is I've backed off the adjustment on the uh, neural inside, and it'd be hard right now. Let's, we're going to take the rotor off so you can get a more visible view of how things are put together on this so you can actually see it. But you haven't a bolt right here built into the rotors with a uh, number five or number 50 Torx that we're going to need to remove so that we can get the rotor off. Now they do that mostly for during assembly purposes. 
Now, a lot of cases you got you got build up in there from the brakes, and you have build up in there from the inside from the parking brake shoes. So we give it a few wraps just to kind of knock things loose a little bit. I like using a hand impact to take those off. You can use a ratchet, but I find the hand hand impact works much better. So our parking brake shoes have been backed off. We have the bolt out. You're going to have some corrosion holding that rotor in place. And usually the best way to get them off is to hit the rotor but hit it on the flat of the hub surface just to break the buildup and corrosion that's built up between the rotor and the hub. And again, be careful. You don't want to hit the any of the studs. If you have some uh, uh, 3 8 or even 5 16 some rubber hose laying around you can cut some short pieces and put it over these just to protect them to keep you from hitting them you see it pop we're going to wiggle back and forth I got a feeling this one's going to be a little tough so if you get one that gives you a hard time you can hear the rust build up in there you can put a rotor or put a screwdriver into the rotor in one of the slots there and then tap on the other side and she's off now this is the adjuster knurl that I access through that hole in the rotor and essentially all you got to do is you're going to turn that with the screwdriver and it'll actually this one will turn up in the other direction because right now I have it fully compressed. You can see the buildup that we get in there. We get rust flakes, we get chips in there, and all that can get caught between the shoes and the inside of the rotor. Plus the rust buildup that develops on the outer edge of the drum section of that rotor where it doesn't make contact with the shoes. And that gets jammed up on here as you're trying to pull it out. So if the shoes look to be in good order, nothing broken, nothing cracked. We should be okay. The hardware looks pretty decent. No rust or corrosion really build up on the retainer springs. So we're going to let those go. But we're going to blow them off with compressed air. Maybe even a light sand and some sandpaper on the shoes just to get their surface cleaned up a little bit. And then make sure we got all the rust blown out of there. And then from that point, basically from here on, it's now just simply reassembly. Putting the rotor back on and then we'll show you how to adjust the parking brake and uh, get the final caliper back on and get you back on the road. All right, so now we're going to reassemble the rear brakes. Now, before this, what we've done, you make sure that your piston is pushed all the way in your caliper. You can use a large pair of pliers, a C-clamp, whatever. And that piston should easily retract inside the caliper. Took the parking brake shoes, took a little sandpaper just to clean off any debris and whatnot, and then brush them off. Take a wire brush, go around the hub just to clean any scale off on there. Now, on your vehicle, <clears throat> you may decide if you see these rotted hulls and whatnot, which up in the northeast is quite common. You could always change this over. We do have these available. Uh, involves a little bit more work with removing the power, or the uh, parking brakes on this. We're not going to get into that on this one. So, so we'll start with putting the uh, back rotor on. Now you can identify the rotors obviously compared to the front because in the rear it actually has a brake drum machining on the inside of it, whereas the front rotors do not. Make sure you line up your lockdown hole, tapered hole between the lug nut holes. We're going to line up with that. Now the parking brakes may not be exactly in position when you go to set these on, so sometimes you got to tap them and fool around with them a little bit. We'll seat that. Take our little hand driver and turn that in. Seat it all the way. Now just to make sure that the rotor is seated all, give a little tap on the opposite direction while I'm still holding tension on the bolt. And that's on good and solid. Okay. Now, take our flashlight, we find our adjuster. We 
which we can see in there. Now you're going to turn this until you've got the rotor locked completely. You're going to spin this all the way out. You can put some tension on it. And it should go out a good 10-15 turns before you really start making contact. Quick check just to make sure it's locked. Now, what we're going to do is back off one full turn or eight clicks. Spin it to make sure we don't have any major drag. And put your plastic inspection cap back on. So now your parking brake is adjusted. When we're done and you've assembled everything, you take your vehicle out for on a road test, stay around the neighborhood, stay like around 10 to 15 miles an hour. And then as you're coasting, you can pull up on the parking brake lever and hold it, and it will activate the parking brakes and let them drag a little bit. That's essentially called burnishing, and what that does is it sets the shoes to the drum. And so that, should you later on need these parking brakes to operate properly, they've been burnished, they would hold fine. As brand new, they need to be burnished so that you can get the initial coating off the, off the inside of the drum. So, now we have the rotor in place. We're going to put the caliper mount on. And we still have our old pads on here. And we'll discard the pads. Now you also have the zinc sliders, which these get pretty corroded. Now the, uh, the kits, <clears throat> if you look, you'll see it in the, as far as the brake pads, the brake pads do not come with the zinc sliders. You'll need to order those separately. In the most cases, you really don't have a lot of corrosion built up underneath, but it's best to take a wire brush. You can see some black debris coming off there, and that's just remnants of the old brake pads. Again, they don't have to be spotless shiny. Just get any uh, scale or debris off of them so that the new sliders sit square. Now you see on the slider, you have two locating tabs, and essentially they're going to sit between these two openings, and of course the, the bridge is going to sit up top. So we'll just set that in so that we've got it in, give it a good push with your finger, and just seat them in. Spin that around. Same thing, locating tabs centered. And they'll just simply pop right in with your fingers. Make sure that your sliders are operating. I like to give them a little spin just so that they know they spin free and they'll move in and out. And then we're going to mount them, put the mount back on the, on the rotor. Now again, this was a uh, 15 millimeter 12 point. So you are going to need a 12 point socket to install it. Now we have the caliper mount back onto the uh, back assembly. Make sure, now I use a half inch drive ratchet, a long one, 24 inch, so I have the levers. You want these good and tight. Got to think of how much stress these are going to be put through during braking. Now when you open up the box with your pads, you're going to notice two pads have a black backing. Two pads are going to have an adhesive backing. Okay, So make sure you put one of, one of each is going to fit on each side. They're not directional. You can see that they're not tapered. but what you do is when you install the pads, the pad with the adhesive backing is going to go on the outside. This is generally there to reduce vibration between the caliper and the pad during braking, which will reduce noise. And that's all that's there for. So, get your pad to line up in your grooves, push in and turn sideways. It should pop in nice and free. And lift the backing from the adhesive off just a little bit. That's why you're not putting your fingers on the adhesive when you install it. Pop that in. Peel that off. Now you get two new bolts for the caliper. 
Reason being, this also comes with lock set right on the thread so that once you put it in, you won't have a hard time backing out. When you put your caliper on, double check and take a good look at your hose. Just make sure that you don't have the caliper twisted in the wrong direction and the hose in a twisted fashion. You want it with a nice, easy bend on here and a little bit of slack. And with the piston pushed all the way in, the caliper should essentially drop right on there. And wiggle around a little bit, get that bolt lined up. You'll feel it drop into place. Just need to start it by a half thread or so. And we take our 15 millimeter thin wrench and grab the back side of that post. And the bottom. All right. So essentially our brakes are assembled. Calipers in place, pads on, everything locked down. Got some slack on the hose, no tight bends. Cap is on, retainer nut is on. Now next thing we're gonna do, now this is the right rear, and we did this side so that we could also show you how to replace the pad sensor, which is this long wire that runs around the back of your air shock and comes around to the other side. And I'll show you how to gain relatively easy access to that because it is sort of hidden on the back side of the air shock. Um, something else I want to mention too is at this point, being you've done the brakes and you've obviously have put some mileage on the vehicle, probably would also be a good idea at this point because you have the wheels off, you put new pads and all on, you should do a brake flush. And I generally recommend it because brake fluid is designed to retain water and dirt that gets into the system to keep it floating in the system so it doesn't get into any of the other hydraulics and creates a problem. Over a period of time you want to flush that out of there just like any other petroleum based fluid. So again you might want to consider doing a brake flush at this point. So now we'll show you how to change over that uh, pad sensor. Okay so we're going to replace the pad depth sensor in the back now that we've replaced the pads. Normally when you go to pull these out you'll generally either break the wire or break the end. These are sort of fragile. Now just to make sure that you have the correct sensor they actually color code the very end of these so like in this particular case you'll see your your end strand just before you enter into the pads are white so our replacement is white and you'll find different colors for different applications but you want to make sure that the one you install in your vehicle matches that color now they wrap this up and around and it runs into the back of the air shock and can be a little difficult if you want to try to do it by feel so What you can do is pop this one retainer out. Now this connector right here on this retainer is not the connector for the pad sensor. That's actually wrapped more so around the back. So to access it, you can either get in there with a flat blade screwdriver or preferably a trim tool. A small trim tool works a little better. Okay. Because what they do on the original, if you're replacing the original, you'll see at the connector end, they have a snap-in grommet, what they actually call a Christmas tree, and this plugs into a flat tab attached to the wiring harness on the back side. So essentially you're going to try to work this around so that you can get your hand on that connector, and you will feel it as soon as you reach around the back. Now I've lifted it up, and there you can see it. And so we're just going to simply squeeze that tab on that back of the connector end and pull those apart. And she's out. Now when you go to reinstall it, it's best to go from the front side with the connector end and to the front and behind the rear brake hose. And you reach back in and get your connector. And push together until you hear the click. If you don't hear a click and you can pull a connector apart, sometimes you can actually have a dry seal on there and they just don't want to go together well. What you can do to cure that, like in this case is exactly what I have, you can take some electrical contact cleaner, uh, electromotive, um, uh, work OL 
and squirt a little bit on that connector and when the seal's a little wet it will pop in and it'll click. So just to show you, it is connected on the back side. So we're gonna pop, I'm gonna pop that back into the hole that we took it out of. Okay. Now behind the brake hose, and you would have seen this when you initially took this apart. Behind the brake hose. There's a bracket right here that you're going to push that grommet onto and then just run it right along the wheel speed sensor wire. Pop that in there. And we'll go pop that in there. We'll sneak this over the axle. bracket and grommet right here. Now you'll have your cap off of your <coughs> off your bleeder. And you're going to see this hollowed piece right here and that's just going to go over the right over the bleeder screw and actually cover the hex part of it. And then uh, put the cover back on on the bleeder and that acts as a retainer and then you have a slot right in the top of the brake pad right there and you'll set this in place and just push in gently until it seats and now your sensor is in make sure your grommets are all fully seated make sure the wiring looks like to be in place make sure you put your grommet here because you have a lot of moving parts in this area you want to make sure all the wiring is secure and out of, out of the way so there it is, there's your rear brakes on your uh, 06 Sport. Now the application on this Sport, it will be exactly the same on an 06 to 09 LR3 or even an, an LR4. Um, and the uh, 2010 to 2012 Sport. So the process will be all the same, including how the, with the uh, pad sensor is. So that's pretty much it. So when you're ready to do the rear brakes on your Sport or LR3, just uh, call any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210, and they'll be happy to help you. All right, there you go, and thanks for watching.